Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Katie Warren, and today we're going to be talking about axonometric drawing and how to construct an exploded axonometric as well. Getting started, uh, some of the materials you'll need are a pencil, an eraser, trace paper, a T-square, your triangles, both of them, the 30, 60, 90, the 45, 45, 90, and then drafting dots and an architectural scale. So um, what exactly is an axonometric drawing? It's a type of orthographic projection which depicts an object at an angle so that more than one side of the object can be seen in accurate proportions. Um, we draw an axon because it allows a 3D view that's easily measurable and it is not skewed in any way. Um, some other types of projections that are kind of similar to axonometric are the perspective and then there's two types of axon drawing. The perspective um, has vanishing points that are not present in the axonometric drawing and they're not accurately measurable because they are a skewed view. And then there's the two types of axon drawing. There's the isometric and then the plan oblique. The isometric is more at an angle and you're looking at the sides of it, whereas the oblique is just looking right at the front of the drawing. Um, the angle that you align your axon drawing at when you're rotating your plan to begin with will change the view that you get. So if you do an isometric, which is just rotated 30 degrees and then 30 degrees, or if you do an axonometric that is 45, 45. And then I typically like to do 30, 60 because it allows a little bit of an angled view that still allows you to see like most of the drawing. So um, I'm gonna go through some of these steps on how to draw an axon drawing more specifically. All right, so I've taped down this plan and it's angled at 30 degrees and 60 degrees. So you're just gonna take your 30, 60, 90 triangle and rotate your plan so that this side of the plan is aligned with the 30 degrees and then this side of the plan, the two front sides, and this one's aligned with the 60 degrees. So then I've just taped a piece of trace paper over that. So the next step that you're going to do is you're going to draw the vertical lines. So you're just going to measure out the heights with your scale. So I'm going to do it <laughs> Um, not measured because I can't really get to that right now, but um, you're just going to measure the perfect height that you want to do and then draw vertical lines just straight up with your T-square. So you're going to draw those to the correct height that it is. So if you can see over here, I drew a little elevation. So it would be six feet right here and then 12 feet right here and then six and 12 right here as well. So I will just draw these ones in the back a little bit taller and then the ones in the front a little bit shorter. So after you've drawn all of your vertical lines, um, you're just gonna draw the horizontal lines that are parallel to the plan. So first start by just drawing the front two edges of the plan because those are the ones that are going to be visible once you create the 3D object in Axon. And then you're going to draw all of the horizontal lines that are parallel to that. So they'll be at the exact same angle as the plan is at. So they'll be directly parallel. So you'll just use the same angle to draw those lines as well. And then for the ones over here, they'll be at the same angle as that, so you'll just move it up and draw those parallel to the plan. So you can just go around drawing all of those lines so that they meet up. Okay. And then once you have your shape or like the basic idea of your shape, you'll just erase the lines that are on the inside that you wouldn't normally see if it was a 3D object. And you'll just kind of clean it up. So yeah, once again, just going through the steps, you'll draw, you'll rotate your plan, tape it down, tape a piece of trace over it. And then you'll draw these front two lines of the plan at the angles they're at. So 
30, and then 60. You'll draw all your vertical lines to the height they should be at, and then all the horizontal lines parallel to that base plan. So here are those steps. You guys can um, review those as well in your small groups and kind of go through those on your own to kind of help you reiterate how to go through each of those. And then another method that you could use, I'm just going to kind of skip through. It has the plan rotated um, in a similar way to how I had the plan rotated. And he's drawn all of the vertical lines and traced the entire plan. But then, so he's measuring out the lines, all the vertical elements. And then he untapes the base plan and just simply moves it down so that the vertical lines line up with the plan again. And then he's just going to go through and trace the plan again to create those other angled elements. So that's another method of how you guys could approach that. You could just move the base plan and bring those lines down to the corner. I'm going to move on to talking about exploded axonometric. So an exploded axon is just showing the different parts and pieces of one of your designs. Say you were designing a guitar and you wanted to show all these little structural pieces, you would just pull those out at parallel angles to the design. So in this chair, you can see they've pulled out each element of the chair. And then they have these leader lines that show exactly where those elements would piece into the chair. So those are really important when you're pulling out the elements, but you would just pull out each element at a parallel line and then just simply draw it again. Drawing with complex shapes like curves, this is actually a drawing that I did my freshman year and it was a curved chair. Um, so you, what you'll wanna do when you're drawing the vertical lines is you'll just draw a line to each point on this curve so that they all line up and then you'll just trace that line on the angle. So you'll rotate your plan first, draw the lines up to each point along the curve, and then trace over that curve. And then another important element from this drawing is that this part is hidden, so it's in dashed lines. So if one, of, one part of your design is hidden by another part, you can draw it, but you can just put it in dashed lines. 